Hey guys, I recently did a recap for my channel, Ellie in Space, of the many adventures that I've been on this year, but I wanted to do a little recap of 2022 for the space industry in general, what happened and what didn't happen. I think there's a lot of backlog for, for, for 2023. The big thing that everyone is waiting for is Starship. I invited my friend Jonathan McDowell to be a part of this conversation. He is a Harvard astrophysicist, so he has some great insight. And of course, his number one favorite thing for 2022, and I have to agree, it's one of my favorites. It has to be the the, the JWST photographs of distant galaxies and yeah. so on, that, that. Because we finally have these to behold. This photo, for example, shows the deepest and sharpest infrared image of the distant universe to date. And check out this comparison to Hubble's deep field. In fact, I found this meme on Twitter. I think it's kind of funny, so shout out to the creator. But yeah, it just it's huge night and day difference between the two telescopes. Here are some more absolutely astonishing photos. Stefan's Quintet. This is a visual grouping of five galaxies. This enormous mosaic is Webb's largest image to date, according to NASA. It covers about one fifth of the moon's diameter. And this one here is my favorite. Favorite. This is Carina's Nebula, located in our Milky Way galaxy. The area, referred to as the Cosmic Cliffs, show a giant gaseous cavity as young stars that were recently born push down ultraviolet radiation and create that jagged looking edge that you see. This image shows a planetary nebula known as the Southern Ring Nebula as it's dying. The image shows the star expelling gas and dust as it dims with the ionized gas seen in quote, unprecedented detail, according to NASA. We also, of course, enjoyed the DART mission, that double asteroid redirection test. On the way for humanity's first ever planetary defense test mission. I think the DART mission and the pictures of it smashing into the asteroid. Oh my goodness. Eight, yeah. seven, oh, six, wow. five, four, three, two, what? Oh my gosh. Oh wow. We're getting visual confirmation. All right. We got it? Waiting. Waiting. And we have an impact. There's been a lot of, of sort of less spectacular things that interest me. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, I think the continued success of Rocket Lab, uh, its small launch vehicle, the Electron, which is going to make its first Virginia launch in a few days, having launched from New Zealand uh, up until now. And since this recording, that launch has been delayed until 2023. If you've been following Rocket Lab, you'll know that the Electron rocket launch was scrubbed on December 7th. It was pushed back five times until December 20th. And with the small window in December, they're just going to wait until the beginning of the new year. So what else did we experience in 2022? Well, of course, Artemis finally launched. I got to see SLS in person, but we're seeing more moon missions, especially from private companies. The uptick in moon missions that aren't Artemis, the Korean lunar orbiter, the capstone experiment. We're, we're seeing what's been promised for a while now, which is this era of international and commercial lunar exploration, robotic lunar exploration, That that's, that's starting to come true. That's interesting to watch the not so great thing being the uh the fallout of the russian invasion of ukraine mm -hmm. on on the space industry the people who got most royally what's the word i can use here <laughs> intimately penetrated by by this event was yeah. was, uh, uh, was one web who were starting to build out their inter satellite internet constellation as a rival to starlink but launching on soyuz rockets and there, you know, 36 of their satellites got stranded in Baikonur after the invasion, and they had to scramble to find new launchers. And so uh, <clears throat> they recently launched uh, their first batch on an Indian rocket. And just last week, they launched their first batch on a Falcon 9. Yeah. So, you know, which is kind of weird that SpaceX is its rival and yet also its launch provider. So that's sort of been things you wouldn't have expected at the beginning of the year. But other missions further down the line have been 
really hosed by this as well. The Euclid Space Telescope was uh, meant to go up on a Soyuz uh, early next year. And so now they've had, I think they're, they've just decided to go on a Falcon 9, which is unusual for a European mission. But I think they just couldn't wait for Ariane 6, which is not ready to go yet. So there've been a whole lot of knock-on effects in the space industry due to people belatedly realizing that Russia is not a good partner to have. So that's going to continue rippling through the industry over the next year. Also because of the Ukraine stuff, the X-ray astronomy Erosita Sky Survey led by the Germans in collaboration with the Russians uh, was halfway done and got shut down because it's a European instrument hosted on a Russian satellite. Oh, wow. And the okay. European governments just said, I'm sorry, this is great science, but put it in safe mode because we're not going to let, even though it's mostly a benefit to our scientists, it's also a benefit to the Russian scientists and we're not going to let them. Wow. I didn't know about and, that one. And yeah, and so that's been, you know, it got halfway through an all sky survey, the first X ray all sky survey since 1990. And we're really looking forward to that data, but we're not getting it. Um, and so that's a scientific tragedy that's, you know, it's not a tragedy, but it's, you know, compared to the tragedy that is Ukraine, it's nothing, right? So, right, so right. Uh, you know, it's just another example of the way in which uh, the, there's been a response to this. We're also seeing more new commercial Chinese launchers. Let's talk about the things that didn't happen and what we're hopefully likely to see next year in 2023. Well, the first Vulcan launch didn't happen this year uh waiting for uh this time jeff bezos to get his uh be4 methalox engines ready and they are now ready and integrated into the first vulcan rocket which is the U tory bruno the ula united launch alliance replacement for the atlas yeah. uh and uh, and so that is now you know it seems like it's on track for a launch early next year um but it's we're still waiting and mm -hmm. and so which is you know to be fair every year right half the things that you thought were gonna that were claimed to be on track for this year you know end up slipping to the next year that's, right right that's how the game goes but a particularly you know no, significant number uh it, it's it's actually a pleasant surprise that artemis one wasn't one of them for i know there, for a while there it looked like it wasn't gonna make it till 2023 just also it's like what did i you know what happened this year it is the things that didn't happen right 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 of which the most obvious is the starship orbital flight as you well know oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right um still waiting still waiting yeah. <laughs> um, I, I i would imagine that there will be several starship flights in 2023 uh and uh, by the end of 2023 maybe on flight number three or flight number four we'll actually make orbit and that's the other thing about uh, starship it's not just about making orbit it's about getting the dang thing back in one piece at the end right right and which you know is doable that i mean you know space shuttle showed that that could be done uh, uh it's a rather different design with starship so it's uh um it's not a done deal that it will work uh right you know right off they may need to iterate um and i think most people don't appreciate how you know we were very excited right by seeing these really impressive views of the early starship upper stage test flights um making these dramatic turns in the atmosphere and so on yeah but the maximum apogee that starship has reached so far is what like you know 20 kilometers or less you know it's barely made it into the stratosphere much less space right uh, so i think most people don't appreciate how much more is to be done before starship is real and I have confidence that the SpaceX team can make it real, but I think people underestimate how far it is between here and there. So we don't only need and want Starship to launch, we also want Vulcan to launch as it's critical for U.S. national security launches. The other rockets are also very important. Uh, and the main motivation there is not to be launching U.S. spy satellites on Russian rocket engines. Yeah. Because that's just embarrassing at this point. Similarly, you know, there's the Antares rocket that Northrop Grumman have, which delivers Cygnus cargo ships to the space station. 
and that is currently using a Ukrainian first stage with Russian rocket engines. And so that's doubly, you know, difficult. And they've got two of them left. And then they're going to switch to this other design uh, with one of the startup companies, Firefly. Yeah, okay. Firefly this year made its first successful orbital launch, right? In February, we'll see Relativity Space's Terran 1 fly. Okay, and that'll be uh, their first one, right? That'll be their first attempt. Yeah. And so there's these these sort of small launch vehicle companies, these new space launch vehicle companies are reaching the pad now. Uh, uh, but I think fascinating is that the Northrop Grumman alliance with Firefly for the new version of the Antares to use basically a Firefly first stage. And this is another example together with Vulcan using Blue Origin main engines for a right. ULA rocket of the barriers between old space and new space crumbling. I think in the case of United Launch Alliance, uh, um, trying to get the Blue Origin to deliver something, you know, ULA quality to them. Uh, Tori Bruno would, if he had had any hair still to lose, <laughs> he would have lost it. It's, it's definitely looks like it's being a process, let's say. But I think it's a healthy thing to be happening, right? I think, I think uh, you know, migrating some of the new space way of doing things into the old space companies and the other way around too, because sometimes the new space companies are a little too cavalier, getting some of that old space caution in the right doses in the right places may mm -hmm. actually be a healthy thing. So tell me in the comments what your favorite moment was for 2022. It really has been a busy year and that's partly why I decided to take the leap of faith and quit my job in TV news so that I could cover space news full time because I really see it ramping up and I think 2023 is just gonna be even more busy. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed to Elliot Space, please make sure to hit that button. It's completely free to subscribe and I've been surprised at the number of returning viewers that I see in my YouTube analytics that aren't subscribed to Alien Space. So hopefully we can bump those numbers up because it really does help my channel grow. So thank you to everyone who has been supportive of Alien Space in 2022. And let's all look forward to 2023 together. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to this. It's com. It's com.